Let us take a closer look at the substring of the pattern that is known to match the corresponding symbols in the text. I will call this substring the overlap. There are two instances of the overlap, one in the pattern and one in the text. Let us concentrate on the two instances of the overlap and ignore all other symbols. In our example, by using just the information that we have available, we can see clearly that the next offset is not a match, because at least some of the line symbols in the overlap are different. So KMP skips over this offset altogether. In the offset after that, all of the line symbols in the overlap are the same. Therefore, for all we know, this offset could be a match. This means that it should be investigated further, and therefore KMP goes to this offset. This raises two questions. Why is this offset special, and how do we compute it as quickly as possible? At this offset, all pairs of known symbols that are aligned do in fact match. These symbols form a suffix of the overlap in the text, and also a prefix of the overlap in the pattern. Such a prefix of the overlap, that also happens to be a suffix, is called a border. Our offset is special because a border of the overlap, seen as a suffix in the text, is aligned with the corresponding border in the pattern. In the offsets that we do skip, the known symbols that are aligned do not all match and therefore do not form a border. But a string typically has multiple borders. In our example, at least two borders are easy to see. Any string has two additional special borders, the empty string and the entire string itself. To obtain a potential match, we could align the pattern using any of the borders. Align at the empty border. Align at the border having just one element. Align at the border having three elements. Align at the border consisting of the entire overlap. But which one of these borders should we choose for the next alignment? First of all, we never use the entire overlap as a border, because there would be no progress. Instead, we have to use one of the other borders, which are called proper borders. If we get greedy and shift too far to the right, we could be missing a match, which is never good. This means that we want our shift to be the smallest, which corresponds to aligning at the largest proper border. This answers the first question. We shift the pattern to the right so that the largest proper border is aligned. On to the second question. How do we quickly compute the new offset? Assume for a second that we know the longest proper border of the current overlap. Call its length L. We compute the new offset by conceptually moving forward the pattern by k positions towards the right, and then retracting it back towards the left by L positions. This ensures that the last L symbols of the overlap in the text align with the first L symbols of the overlap in the pattern, which means that the pattern is now aligned at the largest proper border. In summary, we update the offset by increasing it by a value of k minus l. Once the new offset computed, we also need to update the value of k, which should recall the number of symbols known to match at the current offset. We could reset k to 0, as in the naive algorithm, but we can do better. We know that the border in the text matches the border in the pattern because of how we computed our alignment. For these L pairs of symbols, there is absolutely no need to check their equality again. Therefore, we can simply update k to the value L. It remains to compute L, the length of the longest proper border. To do this, we first notice that at all times, the overlap is a prefix of the pattern. Therefore, there are only as many possible overlaps as there are prefixes of the pattern. KMP has a pre-computation phase, where for each such prefix, the longest proper border is computed.
For each such border, its length is saved into an array. The array is called the failure function because it tells KMP what to do when a comparison fails. Some other people might call it the prefix function. In any case, it stores the same information for every prefix of the pattern, the length of its longest proper border. Further on in the tutorial, I will show you how to pre-compute this array in time linear in the size of the pattern. The array itself allows for the fast retrieval of L, the length of the border. Let us sum up the main idea behind KMP. When a comparison succeeds, we simply increment K. When a comparison fails, things get interesting. By using the pre-computed failure function, we retrieve the length of the border in constant time. We increase the index i by k minus l to align the two instances of the border, and we update k to l. These changes effectively transform the old border into the next overlap. We repeat these actions until either k reaches m, in which case we have a match, or until i is too big to be a valid offset into the text, in which case there is no match. In the next installment, I plan to explain how to compute the failure function efficiently. Make sure you subscribe to the Truly Understanding Algorithms YouTube channel, and hit the bell icon to get notified when it goes live.